This hotel, Chief Inspector Bufflehead, it's fantastic. It's for the birds, if you ask me, a widgeon. But, sir, ducks are birds. Welcome to Fabulous Treetop Hotel. I am Obi. Should you need assistance? Now, where is Dr. Von Scoder? Wasn't he supposed to meet us here, widgeon? Yes, sir so we could escort him to the World Science Conference. Can I interest you in a jeep tour to Mount Kilimanjaro? Special prize today. We didn't come to Kenya to be tourists. Let's find out what room he's in. Uh, the desk clerk uh, isn't here. He had to, uh, run an errand. What room is Dr. Von Skoder in, please? Room 101. Right across from Dr. Eiderstein in room 102. Dr. Eiderstein? That's a coincidence. My auntie is a good friend of his. I wonder if she's here. You can't go anywhere without thinking you're going to run into your auntie. Willard, what are you doing here? Auntie! Inspector Bufflehead, I'd like to formally introduce you to Miss... Yes, yes, your little auntie. <laughs> How quaint. Inspector Bufflehead and I are here to escort Dr. Von Scoder. I'm afraid you are too late. Both Dr. Eiderstein and Dr. Von Scoder are missing. Dr. Von Scoder's lab in Switzerland was broken into, so we've been guarding him since the beginning of the science conference. Dr. Eiderstein invited me here today for a big announcement about his new discovery for the environment. I got hold of the desk clerk. He says both doctors checked out late last night, so I guess there's nothing to worry about. But these rooms have been ransacked. Widgeon has messed up the room we have to share even more than this, and there's nothing suspicious about that. Hmm. What's this? Yeah, I wasn't here, but they left a note. Thank you for a marvelous day, and here is the money to cover our bills. Signed, Dr. Eiderstein and Dr. Von Scoter. Hmm, that is Dr. Eiderstein's signature. I bet they're on their way back to Switzerland. This whole trip to Kenya has been a waste of time. Yes, sir. You did mention it a dozen or so times. It just doesn't add up, Willard. Both Dr. Eiderstein and Dr. Von Scoter were speaking at the big scientific conference this morning. But, Auntie, there's a signed note. It said they checked out. Dr. Eiderstein invited me here. He wouldn't leave before I arrived. We should check the convention center. You do have a point. I better go talk to Inspector Bufflehead. We can't get a flight out until tomorrow, Widgeon. Might as well get some breakfast or lunch or brunch. Sir, uh, my auntie, I, I mean, I was just wondering, sir. What? <clears throat> oh, uh, Obi wasn't sleeping. Obi just resting eyes. Oh, it's all right. I, I just have a few questions. Uh, did you see Dr. Von Scoter and Dr. Eiderstein leave last night? No, no. Obi only one to operate elevator. Elevator keeps monkeys out of hotel. Oh, the mess they made before we got it. Did anything strange happen last night? Yes. I was, uh, resting my eyes when I heard a stampede. But when I looked below, I didn't see any animals. Oh, you are most helpful. Uh, one last question. Does this look familiar to you? All right, Willard, if it'll make you happy, we'll check out the convention center. Yes, both Dr. 
Edelstein and Dr. Von Scooter were scheduled to speak this morning. They were going to announce their latest discoveries, but the hotel desk clerk delivered a telegram from them this morning. Sorry we had to cancel our speeches. Have returned to Switzerland. Dr. Von Scooter and Dr. Edelstein. Now our work is done here. We're on vacation until tomorrow. Now, how about that breakfast? Good. I'm famished. Would you like to join us, Auntie? No, I couldn't possibly eat when two of the world's most important scientists have been ducknapped. Ducknapped? But Auntie, the telegram. What more proof do you need? Willard, sometimes you have to scratch below the surface to get to the truth underneath. I found this blue shale rock in Dr. Eiderstein's room. Opie at the hotel confirmed it comes from Mount Kilimanjaro. It is perhaps our first clue to finding the two doctors. Well, I happen to know exactly where they are. Back in Switzerland. Sir, I think it's time I finally explain something. The truth is, my auntie is Miss... Your auntie is mistaken. That's what she is. She actually wants us to go to Mount Kilimanjaro? But now that I think about it, a trip to Mount Kilimanjaro is an excellent idea. You there. Now, be sure and find out all you can about the blue shale, Auntie. Now, confer with the local police. We'll meet back at the hotel. <laughs> oh, that should keep them busy and out of my feathers. As if the two doctors had been ducknapped. Preposterous! Sometimes I get the feeling Chief Inspector Bucklehead doesn't have faith in me. But he sent you to track down this important lead, didn't he? You're right! He did it that! Wait! The blue shale is here! A perfect match for the rock I found in Dr. Eiderstein's room. Bob, can you take us this way? I want to follow those tire tracks up the mountain. No, uh, we must go this way. If we go that way, they will come after us. They? Who's they? What is it? A, a stampede? Elephants? An antelope? Worse. tours up the mountain if the helicopter always keeps you away. I don't go this way. You must have called the police. What did they say? <laughs> Auntie? Bob? Where are you? <coughs> I'm here. But it looks like our tour guide has abandoned us. Over here. Hurry, before they turn around. My name is Muluani. Thank you for letting us hide out here. I'm Marjorie Mallard, and this is my nephew, Willard. The big black bird always chases anyone taking the road to the right. I wonder why. Perhaps the answer is in the masks. Many creatures wear them for different reasons. The possum puts on a sleeping mask to keep its enemies away. Hmm. There's something familiar about that one. It's the shape of the eyes. I've seen them before. Some use masks to lure in the unsuspecting, like a decoy. Did you say decoy? Changing masks won't keep your identity a secret from me, Dr. Decoy. Look, Willard, I clipped this from the paper a few months ago. Dr. Decoy escapes from prison. Dr. Decoy! Dr. Decoy! The time Dr. has come. Dr. I, Dr. Decoy, the master of our secret city, Dacopolis, will destroy the coral of the Great Barrier Reef with my lasers. You remember Dr. Decoy, Willard. He tried to take over the world by threatening to destroy the world's coral reefs, starting with Australia's Great All Barrier fish Reef. And wildlife in the oceans will die. Mollywani, how did you manage to come up with this face? 
I carve masks of the creatures who live near my home. The animals, the insects, and the ducks who pass by. The one who wears this mask passes by all the time. Sometimes in the big black bird, sometimes in a jeep. He always takes the road on the right. Muliwangi, I'd like to buy this mask from you if I could. You can have it. I've grown to hate that mask frowning down at me. Willard, I'm willing to bet Dr. Decoy has kidnapped the two doctors. We must find out where the road on the right leads. If you're going to climb the mountain, you'll need boots. There's lots of rocks and thorns. Please, let me guide you. I know the way up the mountain so that the big black bird won't see you. Now, we hike up Mount Kilimanjaro. We must be careful because we only have the rocks to hide behind. <laughs> Yes. No, the helicopter kept going. It's flying around the top of the mountain. That's odd. It's not coming around the other side. It never does. Now we must hurry before it comes back. Did you know that Kilimanjaro is the highest mountain in Africa? It rises 19,565 feet. If I didn't, I know now. The wall! This blue shale is clogging up the treads of my boots. Yes, it gets stuck everywhere. You can always tell the mountain climbers from the blue shale they leave behind. If that's true, then the blue shale I found in Dr. Von Scoulter's room means Dr. Decoy is hiding out somewhere on this mountain. But Dr. Decoy can't have a base on the mountain. He'd need lights at night, and lights would be visible for miles. Good point, Willard. But remember what I said before. Sometimes you have to look below the surface. Do you mean in general you have to look below the surface? Or do you mean... Below the actual surface? It turns out both in this case. But how did you know? In the words of Sherlock Duck, when the obvious is eliminated, only the improbable remains. If the base can't be on the mountain, it has to be in the mountain. Maliwani, please take Willard back to town the quickest way possible. Willard, get Inspector Bufflehead and the police back up here. Hurry, I've got to sneak inside and see if I can find the two doctors before this door closes. Be careful, Auntie. <laughs> So it is Miss Mallard that we're supposed to watch out for. I don't even know what she looks like. Nah, don't worry. I got eyes like an eagle. No one's getting past me. My, my. This place is made of old scraps. I guess world domination doesn't pay as well as it used to. Perhaps it's time I became one of Dr. Decoy's loyal followers. For the time being, anyway. Decoy! Loyal followers, allow me to introduce the great scientist, Dr. Eiderstein. He has <clears throat> kindly donated his new invention to our cause. Water new, which freezes water to ice that won't melt without the counter agent. With water new, Water can be frozen into huge icebergs, towed to drought-stricken areas, and then melted. Now that I've stolen his invention, should I use it to stop drought? No! Of course not! Which is why I stole the plans to Dr. Von Stoughter's new rocket. Yeah! It will deliver water new to its target, Victoria Falls. Yeah! With the good doctors in my wings, the leaders of the world will not know what to do. They will have to bow to my wishes, or I'll freeze all the oceans, all the lakes, and all the rivers. Yeah! I've got to find a way to stop Dr. Decoy, or the world's largest waterfall won't be falling anymore. <sighs> Willard, we must keep running. It's still an hour to Nairobi. An hour? There's got to be a better way. I just can't run any faster. 
Something tells me we can run faster! A lot faster! We run now! Make it back to Nairobi in half the time, I bet! Wait, Mulliwani! I'm interested in this idea of antis! You know, scratching the surface to get to the truth underneath! If we don't get going in a hurry, this elephant is going to be scratching our surfaces! No! Hear me out! Uh, now, at first impression, this may look like an angry elephant protecting his territory! <laughs> The truth is, I think he needs our help. See? He's got a thorn stuck in his foot. Easy, fella. I'm not gonna hurt you. It would appear you have learned the meaning of your aunt's lesson very well. Whoa! Now that I think about it, I bet our pachyderm pal will come in handy. And now, loyal followers, it's the countdown to world domination! Start the countdown! Imposter, I'm the real decoy. Keep going. Two, nine, eight, oh, I seven, said stop. Six, and I said go. Six, stop. Go. Nine, eight, Don't panic. Seven, this thing is blasting off five, right now. Okay, you can panic now. A little smoke in their eyes and... I know. And these ducks start quacking their heads off. Marjorie! Miss Mallard, I should have known. <laughs> Victoria Falls, here we come! Don't worry. I know how to catch them all, but we must get back to Nairobi. Well, in that case, all aboard! Come on, let's see the bottom of your boots. All right, go stand over there with the rest of them. You were right about the blue shale. All of Dr. Decoy's followers have it stuck in their mountain boots. Yes. But we still haven't been able to nab Dr. Decoy. I have one more place to check. Come on. I've gathered you here to reveal the identity of Dr. Decoy. When I start a case, everyone is a suspect. What? The no! Uh, this is outrageous. At my age, nothing surprises me anymore. But as I collect clues, potential suspects are eliminated. At first, I wondered about Bob, our tour guide. He refused to take us up the road that led to where I suspected Dr. Decoy had his hideout. He knew the black helicopter would come. And when Willard asked if he had called the police, Bob disappeared. But... Maliwani said he had seen Dr. Decoy flying the black helicopter, and since Bob can't be in two places at once, he can't be Dr. Decoy. Phew. Oh, uh, by the way, Bob, uh, you dropped your mask at the mountaintop hideout. Oh, thanks. It's also the mask worn by Dr. Decoy's hench duck. Huh? Chief, arrest this duck. That leaves Obi the elevator operator... 
the desk clerk. The desk clerk said the doctors left late at night and showed us a note signed by Dr. Eiderstein as proof. But Obi claimed the doctors didn't leave by the elevator, which is the only way down from the treetop hotel. So, who's fibbing? When I looked at the desk clerk's note, indeed it was Dr. Eiderstein's signature. That seems to point to Obi. But wait a minute. Obi, didn't you say you thought you heard a stampede that night? That's correct. But when I looked, there wasn't an animal in sight. What you heard was not the sound of animal hooves, but a helicopter. Obi didn't see the doctors leave by the elevator because Dr. Decoy flew them away from the rooftop. So, let's look at this signed note. If you compare Dr. Eiderstein's signature on the note to his signature on the guest register, you'll see they're exactly the same, which means they have been traced, for no one can sign their own name exactly the same size twice. And since the desk clerk had access to the guest register, he's the only one who could have faked the note. And he delivered the telegram to the conference center. Officer, I give you... Dr. Decoy! Stop! In the name of the law! What are you up to now, Widgeon? Still looking for the not-missing doctors? I can't believe you and your auntie actually thought they were duck-napped when all the evidence shows they are safely back in Switzerland. Uh -oh. See? Just like I said, safely back in Switzerland. But, I mean, but how? It's like my auntie always says, Inspector Bufflehead. Sometimes you have to scratch below the surface to get to the truth underneath. Hey! You can say that again, Willard. 